For some of us, developing an algorithm to solve complex problems in code feels overwhelming. Sometimes there's a complex problem to solve, but like so many things in life, it could be solved by breaking it down into smaller pieces. I'm gonna show you how I use Jupyter Notebook to do just that. I'm Mel Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco, and I'm excited to show you how Jupyter Notebook can help you achieve more in less time. Let's go. I like how they spell Jupyter with a Y. Uh, maybe that's a kind of a tribute to Python. I hope I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, drop some comments down below, let me know. All right, so if you don't already have Jupyter Notebook installed, visit jupyter.org and click install and scroll to the section named Jupyter Notebook. There are different installations of Jupyter, but we're gonna focus on Jupyter Notebook. Follow the installation instructions and once installed, you can launch Jupyter Notebook from the command line. Pro tip, find a working directory where you, you would like the notebook files organized. I change directory to where I keep notebooks and I'll create new, a new directory named Jupyter-intro. I'll change to that directory and launch Jupyter Notebook with the command Jupyter Notebook. Press enter. A new browser tab or window is automatically launched and we're presented with the Jupyter Notebook interface. In the upper right hand side of the interface, you'll notice the new button along with the kernel options. Out of the box, the IPython kernel is available, but there are over a hundred other kernels supported, uh, supporting other languages you can add. I've added a link in the description below for reference. In my case, in addition to Python, I've added .NET support for C Sharp, F Sharp, and PowerShell, but we're gonna focus just on Python. Create a new Python file, and you'll see a new tab open. One of the first things you'll see is a cell which by default is configured to execute code. That's here in the pulldown where you'll see code and markdown listed as options. Setting it to code means Jupyter Notebook expects code to execute in the cell. Switch it to markdown and now Jupyter Notebook expects to execute markdown in the cell. Let's start by switching the code to markdown and let's enter some text. I'll add a header and some text and execute by hitting shift and enter on my keyboard. You can also click the run button. Now let's write some simple Python in the cell just below the first one we executed. First, we'll do something simple like import requests. Then let's do a get from the developer.cisco.com website, like so. X equals request.get HTTPS developer.cisco.com. Shift enter. Request.get executes and stores the output in a variable named x. Now let's print the value of x.txt. We see a lot of output. You can scroll up, you can scroll down, and here's a pro tip. If you look in that cell on the left hand side, you'll see that gray bar that will appear right when you uh, hover over it. If you click once, It'll summarize everything as so you can scroll up and down. Click on it again and it'll expand it. And if you double click it, everything will be collapsed. You can always bring it back by clicking in the middle and it'll bring it back. Let's find out more about the object returned by Python requests by using Python's dir module, which returns a list of attributes and methods of any object. Scroll down and we'll see which we uh, we'll see text which we've already used. Let's try printing x dot reason. We see an okay. All right, that's a good thing. Let's try printing the status code. We see a 200. Also a good thing. All right, we're good. And then for giggles, let's print the value of the URL, which we knew we put it ahead of time, right? But let's just see the value so that we know what request was actually looking for. Great. Look at that. We haven't gone deep into complex algorithms, but I'm hoping you can see how something like expanding objects is fairly straightforward, but would be more challenging if it were in your IDE. Thus, developing an algorithm uh, piece by piece is made easier with Jupyter Notebook. If you don't have Jupyter Notebook uh, installed, visit jupyter.org. I'll post the link below and learn more about its powerful capabilities. If you're new to Python altogether, visit developer.cisco.com and look for the learning tracks to help you get started with Python.
Thanks for watching.